the number one Costa Rica real estate and investment podcast, bringing you experts from all over Costa Rica. Good morning, guys, and welcome to episode 145 of Costa Rica Real Estate and Investments with me, your host, Richard Beckson. Today, we're going to be talking with Shiloh Lundel. Uh, he's an international real estate investor and real estate coach. He helps people build wealth through real estate investing and runs real estate investing retreats out of his three properties here in Costa Rica. So today, we're going to be talking to him about comparisons between you know the US and Costa Rica, why he chooses Costa Rica, and his advice on anyone investing here in Costa Rica. I always like to get people that have actually kind of made the jump um, and that can give you advice on what you should look out for, what you should do, and basically what you shouldn't do. So this should be a great podcast. Remember, uh, if you're looking at doing a project in Costa Rica and want some help, uh, we use a lot of data. Uh, we also have hospitality data, vacation rental data, real estate data, so we kind of pull all those three things together. Um, that combined with basically kind of your goals and also your, your I'd say goals from a lifestyle investment point of view, we kind of put everything together there just to make sure you're making the right investment for you. So you can reach us info at investingcostarica.com. That's info at investingcostarica.com. Anyway, let's get straight into the podcast. Good morning, Shiloh. How are you doing? I am doing great, Richard. Thanks for having me on your show. No, not at all. That's a beautiful background you have. Whereabouts is the, where, where's that view? That is from the back balcony of one of my properties that I have in Costa Rica. This is up on a mountaintop between San Ramon and uh, Esparza. It's just right on the, the border of Alajuela and uh, Punta Arenas. Very nice. Right? Yeah, it looks very, I, I was looking at it and I was like, is that Naranjo, Grecia? But yeah, I mean, it's, it's not too far away from that, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, the, I always like to kind of just start off the podcast, Shadow, you know, just to get a real idea of, you know, I think everybody's aware of kind of economies around the world, kind of what things are happening, interest rates kind of rising. Um, and you kind of bounce between the two countries of US and Costa Rica. So it's just, I'd love to just get your viewpoint of kind of what's happening. Like, you know, I think everyone's aware of what's happening in the US, but what are you seeing happening here in Costa Rica? Oh, good question. So, yeah, as you know, in the United States, the interest rates have doubled within the last year. And because of that, it had a big impact on investing. And so I'm, I'm a real estate investor. I own you know, lots of properties in the, in the United States. Um, and then I own a couple down in Costa Rica. Now, when the markets in the United States, you know, when the interest rate goes up, it has a big impact, but in in Costa Rica, I've noticed that it it doesn't have nearly as much of an impact if the interest rates go up or down in the United States. And you know, obviously they're different countries, but I think it has a lot to do with uh, the the real estate market in the United States is highly dependent upon interest rates. If it's hard to get funding, if it's hard yeah. to get loans, then it's going to be hard to. It, it can dramatically affect how well an investment does in the United States. But in Costa Rica, my experience has been that um, the, the real estate market, a lot of people don't get loans on properties in Costa Rica. Now, I have a couple of properties um, out there and, and one has some seller financing. Um, but that, you know, I think I, I'm getting it at 12 percent um, and it's just for a portion of the, the cost of the property. And that's that's kind of normal is to get a property there where the seller is willing to, um, you know, finance a portion of the property. Yep. And usually it's around those rates. I'm going to be getting another one in in Arenal um, or in La Fortuna near Arenal in a few months. And that seller is going to be um, holding back half at eight percent for about four years. That's pretty good, though. 8% in four really years is not bad at the moment. Well, right now, it's fantastic. It's like the same rates that I would get in the States. And so yep. I'm super happy with it. Nice, nice. Well, let's get to that. I'm, I'm interested to know a little bit more about the Arenal property. So we'll kind of get to that, um, you know, uh, a little later. But again, you worked, but you, I mean, yeah, I mean, I suppose, you know, you've invested in the US for many, many years. Why did you decide to focus your investments in Costa Rica? And like, I mean, how would you like say it compares because there's a lot of people listening to the podcast that are thinking about doing it you know uh looking at doing it but like why would someone from the us that's a real estate investor look at costa rica like what are the pros and cons 
Uh, and what should people know? Yeah, it's a great question. My story is going to be a little bit different than probably most people's stories, and everybody's story is different, but this is how mine goes. I actually lived in Costa Rica in my early 20s. I was a missionary. And as a missionary, I got to go and live in several different areas of Costa Rica. And I just really fell in love with the country, fell in love with the country, the people, the food, and it's just such a beautiful place. And so, um, you know, as, as I came back to the United States and I, you know, went through my schooling and I, I'm actually a, a licensed therapist as well. That, that's my profession. I went to school, became a licensed therapist opened up my own um, uh, therapy practice. And and then eventually I, I bought the building that I had my therapy practice in back in 2014. And that really kind of got me going more into real estate. I had a little bit of real estate before that, but that really kind of propelled me. And, you know, I, I was just kind of trying to, to set my family up to where we could in, enjoy life and, and have some extra money to go on vacations and things like that. But as things kind of started to roll and, and I was able to create some wealth through real estate. My heart was always in Costa Rica. And I took my daughter when she was 12. We went on a, a daddy-daughter vacation. We went down to Atenas, Costa Rica. Yep. And Atenas is well known as it supposedly has the best weather in the world, right? It's yeah, it, you know, touts that it says, you know, we have the best. And um, what was neat about it was we stay in this Airbnb on the side of it. And I'm looking at the valley below and I'm like, man, that is just incredible. I would love to own a place like this. There was a main house, had a, you know, a guest house with a couple of different, you know, apartments connected to it. And I'm like, this is what I want. I want to have a house here. I want to rent some, you know, some other places out so that I can come here and enjoy. So that was my vision when I went there with my daughter. And so the real estate really helps support my ability to to meet my dreams and, and to reach my dreams, which was to have a beautiful place in Costa Rica, which we bought last year in January. And so now I have this property that's on two and a half acres. It has a main house, you know, on, on top of a mountain, which is five bedroom, three bathroom. It has this infinity pool. Then it has a guest house, which is three bedroom, one bathroom. Then we have a, we converted a, a shop into the groundskeeper's quarters. And then we built a tiny house on it. It sleeps up to like, 24 25 people the wow. whole property and that's that was my dream that's what i wanted and so for me costa rica is like a lifestyle investment that's that's what i wanted in order to enjoy a, a part of my life i have investments in the united states they're doing well and we're stabilizing them always and and that that's great for income but now i wanted to go and, and like buying one more property in the united states i might be able to get a better return on it but I, I wouldn't get nearly as much of a return on enjoyment and, and lifestyle. So that's why I own property in Costa Rica. For me, yeah. it was in order to, you know, really enjoy my, my life. It's funny though, because again, you know, we're all about tangible returns, you know, how much cash I can make. And it's very difficult to put a rate of return on the intangible, you know, which is the, you know, the ability to come down to Costa Rica, enjoy it, slow down, be present, eat healthy, you know, be by sun. You know, I say to people sometimes, look, if you want the logic, you know, tack two or three percent onto it based on that. But also is that like you don't have to pay for a vacation rent anymore once you have one right. down here. So so throw that on it as well. You know, exactly. There's, there's different ways to skin the cat. But I think it's, you know, we're so focused in the Western world on tangible returns. And there are tangible returns to be had here in Costa Rica, you know, but there is also the intangible, which I think that you need to add on to it as well. Absolutely. And so, you know, when we go down there, we have vehicles with our properties and we have caretakers in our properties. And so our caretakers come and pick us up from the airport. They bring us down back to the property. Now we have vehicles that we can go and, and explore the country of Costa Rica. And, and, you know, to be honest, it's a small country, but there is so many amazing things that are so, you know, distinct to Costa yeah. Rica. You know what I mean? And it's just, it's awesome. And so you can go and you can explore for, for months and probably not go and, and see everything that there is to see. So yeah, to me, that has a huge return. And, you know, to be honest, my daughter and I, we went down there and then um, a year later, I took my son down there 
And then I'm really kind of building up to this idea of wanting to own property there. And so my business partner and I actually went down there to take a look at the different um, type of real estate that we could do and which ones would create a good return so that we could sustain the property, right? Because we didn't just want a liability that would cost us every month to, you know, to own something down there and then just go and, and enjoy it for maybe, you know, a few weeks a year. So what we did was we took a look at what the lending was like. We took a look at, you know, what is it like to have just a regular rental? And then what are the other options that we could do? And what we found is the more lucrative type of investing that you can do in Costa Rica would be hard money lending, but you yep. need to understand the laws really well. And you need to understand, you know, if someone doesn't pay, how do I obtain that property? How do I foreclose on them, basically? Yep. And then the other one would be to have a really nice, unique short-term rental that brings in a lot of a lot of traffic. Those were the two that we found would work well in Costa Rica, like a nice, large short-term rental that you could have like as a boutique hotel and then um, or just a unique property along with hard money lending. Yeah, I mean, the hard money lending thing has always been something interesting. It's just, you know, people sometimes paying 12, 14 percent, you know, uh, it gets. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've done some hard money loans down here for some of my clients. So, you know, but it's on stuff that I know personally and also know them as right. well. But I mean, what kind of returns, if you don't mind me asking, could, you know, because you now have, you know, three properties or two, and then you're closing on another one at the moment. And again, as I mentioned, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, I mean, what type of returns do you think people could expect or what type of returns are you, uh, are you guys, you know, creating, if you don't mind me asking? No, uh, not at all. So I think it's going to depend upon the operator. Now, you know Costa Rica really well, and you know marketing for properties really well. And so you're going to probably get better returns than me just based on your personal experience, right? So I'm trying to um, improve myself in, in that area, you know, how to market my properties better and things like that. So for right now, the house on the mountain um, that return is looking to be between a five and 10% return to the investors per yep. year. Um, the one on the beach, however, is going to be more between a 10 and 15% return. And I think it has a lot to do with location. People really like the idea of going to the beach in Costa Rica. Yep. And that's, that's great. That's fine. That's something that they really like. And there are beautiful beaches in Costa Rica. And what's, what's neat about them is they're not, like there's a lot of them that are really, really pretty that aren't like packed with people. You can walk down this, you know, pristine beach and be by yourself for, you know, uh, like a half hour or something. You know what I mean? And it's really kind of cool to have these unique experiences with all of the beauty around. So we do have a house in Avellanas, yep. Costa Rica, which is just, you know, about a half hour south of Tamarindo. And it's beautiful and it has a beautiful beach and it's really close to Lola's, which is down there, which is a yep. kind of a, a you know, popular spot to go to. Um, and it's, it's just awesome. But that draws a lot of people to that specific location because of the beach. Right. But for me, I personally like the mountains in Costa Rica. I'm with you, man. Because, I mean, beaches are wonderful and they're beautiful, but I love to be able to go in and see a view that's just incredible, which is, you know, you see behind me the this view that I, I took this picture from um, the back balcony of my property and or of the of the main house in the, the mountain house. You can see like miles and miles and miles. You can see all the way to the ocean. And it's about a half hour from the ocean, but you can see it from there. And my favorite place in the world is that back balcony at sunrise where you see the sun coming up over the mountains and it just starts to change colors over the whole valley. To me, it's just, just amazing. So I enjoy the mountains more. Now, this property that we have there, we've had a lot of, um, we've had a few weddings there maybe three or four. And I want to tap into the wedding market more because, you know, it's a large property that, yep. that just has a lot of, um, a lot of ability to, to have weddings and things of that nature. So that's where I want to connect with you more and see what you're doing with marketing because you've done that fantastic. And so, but that, that's what I would say for the returns. It depends on the location, like the one that we're getting in La Fortuna. La Fortuna, I would say is, is one of the top three most tourist areas of Costa Rica, if not the, the most touristy area. And the reason is you have this awesome cone shaped volcano 
and then you have this lake and then you have everything else that you can find in the rainforest. You have tons of animals that you can go on these like night hikes or, or day hikes and, and, you know, spot all of these really cool uh, animals from Costa Rica. And then you have some amazing waterfalls. You have a ton of zip lines, you have whitewater rafting, you have like chocolate tours or coffee tours, just so many other things. You have rope swings and then you have the hot springs. The hot springs are, are amazing there. You know, you have, there's a river that's a hot river. You know what I mean? You can go and you can sit in well, the river. And here's one for awesome. you. Tabacon was sold that land, all that land, and it's a lot of land for $10,000 mm -hmm. back in the 70s, I think it was. Manny's dad bought it because the farmer did not want it because his cows could not drink from the river because it was hot water. You know, I mean, it's the Mikowskis that, that, that developed that property. I mean, it's just such a great story and like going from the hot springs, you know, and then building the restaurant and then to the actual Tabacon Resort as it is today, you know. I mean, it's probably one of the most iconic properties in this country, but yeah. just a great story, you know. So, yeah. but let's talk about, let's talk about your Aaron Al property at the moment and kind of sure. how you, you know, how you kind of, I mean, I suppose the word would be syndicate the deal. Is syndication really the yeah. word or, or how I, do you do it? It would be just, just joint venture. Like you okay. can syndicate, but this one's going to be more joint venture with um, six other people. And so I already have like three people that are coming in on the deal with me. And basically the way that this works is um, we're going to be buying this property for about 650,000. And this property has, it's, it's a beautiful property. It's really close to the lake. You probably throw a stone and, and hit the lake and um, it has eight bedrooms, has 10 or 11 bathrooms. Wow. And it has a really cool pool and, and um, hot tub. And so it's a really cool looking property. So our plan is to go in there, build a caretaker's cottage so that we can have somebody go in and take care of the whole property, do all of the cooking and the cleaning. Uh, it's going to be more of a bed and breakfast, but we're, we're setting it up kind of like how we did the beach house, right? This last year it brought in about $120,000 of revenue. What we're going to do is we're going to make it so that you can rent out the entire place um, or you can, if, if there's weeks in between or days in between when it's fully rented out, we're going to open up all of those rooms for individual room rentals. And yeah. it's going to be a bed and breakfast. So you can come, you can stay there. You get a good breakfast in the morning. You get to be by the, the lake and see the volcano and all of those things. Um, and so we're going to do that, which is going to lessen vacancy and increase revenue. And it's the yep. same thing that we did um, on the on the beach house in Avellanas, and I found it to work really, really well. So we project that that property will probably bring in about two hundred and twenty thousand. We're also going to be adding another story to it, um, and create a really cool master suite, and then a, you know a, more of a, a hangout area as well. And so, uh, and and the neat thing, this is what I would suggest, right? If if somebody is considering investing in Costa Rica, you have to ask yourself, do I want to get in and get, you know, elbow deep in the whole process and I'm going to find contractors and I'm going to, yep. you know, do some research and, and figure all of these things out? Because if that's the case, then go do that. But if you're like, you know what, I want to be able to have a place where I can go and visit and enjoy. But at the same time, I don't want to spend all of the time it's going to take and require to uh, to find contractors and then how do I trust those contractors? You know, it's another country, there are different laws. You know, how do I keep my investment safe? And if, if I'm not gonna spend a ton of time, then the next best thing to do is to partner with um, or invest with somebody who does do that, who knows the area, who has yep. the connections. So like 20 years ago, as I mentioned, I was a I was a missionary down there and I made some fantastic connections with people. And so I the contractor I use, I've known for 20 years and super great guy. And, and he comes and, you know, he's so funny. He's like the smooth talker from Costa Rica. And he's like, I'll handle that. I'll, I'll help you with that. But the truth is he gets things done. He's able well, to that's, go. The that's unique in Costa Rica because there's a lot of good talkers here. I mean. You know, I've heard good talkers where someone's handed like $150,000 over for 50% for a house and then they just disappear. It was like, I just don't get it. They were just like so nice. And I'm like, people here are just nice full stop. But like, you don't give like a, a builder here 50% of like, you just don't do it. Right. Yeah. You know, absolutely. You need to have, you need to know people. Um, if you're going to go and do it, then, then you need to get to know people really well, see what they've already yeah. done. Right. And and so that's what, what I did. I knew him. 
And so as a smooth talker, what I was meaning by that is he's helped me get things through um, like uh, permitting or, or you yeah. know, government things where he's like, all right, so this is the situation. Can you help us out here? Can you help us out there? Because there's a lot of red tape that's not very necessary. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so he's there's able a dance. to... That's a dance yeah, you've got is. to do, dude. It's it a, dance, a dance. You know? And so you, as you work with somebody who knows the dance, it's so much better because this is something that I would tell people that might be a little nugget. So we have this property up in the mountains, as I've been mentioning, it has like 20 beds and we wanted to get some really nice upgraded sheets. So we buy all of these sheets in the States and we bring them down to Costa Rica. <laughs> you see where I'm I going? I, know. Well, I, I already know where this yeah. is going. <laughs> so we start getting into the country and they see us bringing all of these bags and there's all these sheets and they're like, well, what are you doing? You need to pay taxes on those. I'm like, well, I already, I paid taxes. I, these sheets are, are, for personal use in my house, I have a big house with lots of beds. Like, no, no, no. And they put them in into uh, basically customs jail. So yeah. I had all of my sheets were, were you know, what do you call it? Repossessed. They were, they were yeah. taken and put, you know, confiscated at customs. And I'm like, what? And so it was really frustrating. But the good thing was I was able to you know, connect with a friend. I'm like, this was my situation. He's like, okay, I'm going to go and help you. And so he goes down there and he starts talking with people. And then he was able to talk to somebody else who was able to talk to somebody else. And he's like, okay, man, what can you do in order to help us do this? And it really yeah. is a dance. And in it order is. to be able to get our, you know, our it's... blank or our, our sheets out of customs. And we did have to pay, but without knowing somebody that could navigate through that whole thing, basically yeah. they just would have confiscated them and we would have had to pay like thousands and thousands of dollars to ne get our sheets out next time take them out the packaging take Correct. everything out and just put them in in yep. your in your suitcase that is what i've learned take them out put them in your suitcase and then put that's other it. things along with them that's it make them so, look like they're used and not new like they're looking for stuff that's you know either have large electrical equipment or that kind of stuff like i mean i remember getting stopped once with a playstation coming from panama you know, and they thought it was under 500 bucks and they just stamped my passport and then that was it. Because you can bring in $500 here without paying taxes on. But like when it's beyond that amount, then yes, you know, it's, uh, but yeah, it's, I, I mean, I just went through it with a property that we bought and developed and, and then we have for sale at the moment of like, I bought hotel sheets from a hotel company here, which I know that, you know, does it. It would have been cheaper for me to buy them from the States, but like the place only has like three bedrooms. So like, it's not necessary. Oh, yeah. You know, but yeah. if it was someone large, yeah, I'd ship them down from the States because they'd probably save it, you know. Well, yeah, and, and they're different quality. But also, I think the beds are different sizes in Costa Rica. So they, sometimes they can the, be, sheets yeah. the sheets don't well, fit exactly or they're like super, super tight. Yeah, it's like full queen. Sometimes there's not. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, completely get it because we have all our beds custom made, you know, to, onto U.S. standards and then have to make sure we right. get U.S. You know, yeah, yeah. So it's it's interesting. But well, but the beds, you're... like the, I would say that, you know, speaking about the beds and they, they're incredible. The woodworking in Costa Rica is like insane. It's... it's absolutely incredible. There was one time I went and I saw this desk and it was selling for like a thousand bucks, but I just thought that was the most beautiful desk I'd ever seen in my life. And it was just absolutely beautiful with all of the different Costa Rica wood in it. Just, yeah, just amazing. Just amazing. I mean, the, the hardwood live edge stuff that we get here is 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 beautiful, and it's not that expensive either. So, uh, right. but yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. I mean, if you were to go back in time, Charlie, to when you when you thought you bought your first property here and tell yourself something that would have helped you on your journey, what would that have been? Oh, good question. I think I would have said, "You're underestimating the expenses." <laughs> That's what I would have said because you don't know. I mean, I have properties in the states, but it, you know, I'm I'm newer to the short term rental space, yep. right? So we have some cabins in Arizona, and then we have these two, almost three, down in Costa Rica. And so right now, I've been spending the last maybe four or five months really digging into learning how to run luxury large short term rentals. And it's yep. just something that you learn, just like I learned how to do real estate, and I became successful at that. I know I'm going to be doing well with this. I have some coaches that I'm, I'm getting coached from and how to improve it. But I would say that we tend to underestimate um, costs. And so um, that was that was me as well. I underestimated the costs, but not by too much. Um, but other than that, I don't know, I probably would have said, 
this is going to be a lot of work, but it's going to be awesome. And because it really has turned out to be awesome. And, oh, but I didn't know about the bringing things into the country. I would have yeah. told myself that, be careful of customs. And I would have said, um, getting <laughs> getting things set up, like with uh, the utilities and stuff, is a little bit more tricky. And you need to have somebody that you trust and give them kind of a, a power of attorney to get some things done for you if you're not going to be there. But have it be a limited power of attorney over just just spe yep. specific things. So I mean, that's just a you can, of and you can do that. You can do that. You can do a power of attorney that's like it's only for these companies by, you know, like interactions with the electricity company, internet company, water company, et cetera, that they only have power on. So, you know, which is kind of good. I mean, you need a good lawyer in Costa Rica, right? Yeah, I've worked with a couple of them and all of the ones I've worked with have been great. They really yeah. have. So my experience has been, you know, working with different, um, different uh, like realtors um, down there. It's a, it's a great way of kind of getting to know the country, getting to know if people are like where people are buying different prices, just kind of get to know it. If you're really considering, you know, going down and buying something in Costa Rica, have it be, you can buy properties pretty quickly. And I've heard you say that on the, on your website or on your um, podcast, you, you really can. I think that you can buy properties pretty easily, but I would say if you want to, then give yourself some time because there's a lot of beautiful properties in Costa Rica. I would say, start looking and say, look, I'm not going to buy anything for three or four months. I'm going to do a lot of research and find yeah. out where I want to buy and why I want to buy it there. Cause you know, you'd asked me about the, the three properties that I have and that I have in Costa Rica is going to be the mountain house, right? In an area that I personally liked. So it, it's similar to Avellanas in weather and in beauty. Um, and then I have one up in on the beach in Avellanas. And then I have one um, that I'm buying in La Fortuna. For me, that was kind of the trifecta because people love to go and visit La Fortuna. Uh, yeah. The mountain house is great, you know, for me with what I wanted in my life. And then people love the beach. And so what I do is I like to go down there and then visit all three three properties during a stay you know i might be there for a week or so and stay a couple of days here a couple of days there and that's what i personally like and but we're also creating these um kind of excursions for people so if somebody wants to go down and really get a feel for costa rica well that's great come and do you know your 10 day stay with us we'll have you go to the mountain house for three days we'll pick you up from the airport we'll bring you there you can use our vehicles to go and explore then we'll take you to arenal and then you can go and use our vehicles again there to explore and then we take you to the beach house and then you, you know, finish your trip there. So that's really what I want to do is I want to give people these experiences mm -hmm. that are just incredible experiences where they can uh, really immerse themselves in the different areas of Costa Rica. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was interesting because again, I just, I mean, I've said it on previous podcasts. We just had, but we just analyzed 4,000 vacation rentals throughout Costa Rica. Some of the top performing vacation rentals. And Avianas was interesting because it's revenue per, per, her bedroom was one of the highest in the country. And I was not expecting that, you know, maybe it's just mm -hmm. because I think there's a lot of demand for Avianas. Well, I know there is a lot of demand for Avianas. It's a great location, you know, from an occupancy and average daily rate as well, because they're just really, there is more demand and supply in the area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And they're building more, they're building more, but there's an issue with, uh, um, there's like water permits. And so Correct. they, they need to be mindful of how, how, they give yep. those permits out. So yep. for us, it was great because our our house is just like a, a a block away from the beach. It's like a hundred, you know, yards from the beach and just a three minute walk. But we had the the water rights, and we were able to take something that you can rent out the entire place and then break it up into the room, the rent by the yeah. room model. So what you're saying is ab absolutely correct, and and it's worked out really really well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're just those pockets in Costa Rica, you know, that I mean, and again, we constantly look at that and find those pockets because it really is hospitality data leads real estate data. Because again, if someone's going to come in and buy that property from you, Shiloh, you know, they're going to look at what your returns been as well, unless it's a completely emotional decision. But there has to be some logic behind it as well. And I typically found for people that are that have like have made money, they need some logic behind it. Like it can't just be a hundred percent emotion. There needs to be some, like, I can't lose money on this, you know, mm -hmm. at yeah. some point. So, so yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. And I mean, that's similar to my wife. You know, I'm saying, hey, I really want to buy a place in Costa Rica. And she's like, okay, well, how? So if I can say, well, I can make it so that it, I don't have a lot of my own money into it, which is what I've done yeah. with bringing investors together. And I'll bring yeah. investors together. We'll all put in a certain amount. And then we can all use the property for about a week, a year, maybe a week and a half. And then it still gives us enough time to bring in other, you know, rent or like uh, guests to come in and stay there. And that covers all of the costs. Plus it makes us some money. So that was the sale that I had to create for my wife. I had to show her on paper. This is what's going to happen. This is how we're going to do it. So it doesn't cost us a lot and we can go and enjoy yep. it. So it's important to it. know the, the actual numbers. It's really important. Well, Chalo, this has been a great podcast. My last question for you, um, which I love to ask everyone, is if you inherited $500,000 and had to invest it into a business or real estate in Costa Rica, what would you do with it and why? It really depends on if I want to be active or if I want to be more passive. Let's if say, I wanted to be, yep. say again? No, no, I was going to say, give me both. Okay. So if I wanted to be more active, then I would not spend it right up front. I would pause, I would go down there and I would spend um, a month connecting with different people going and, and looking at different places and asking myself, is this something that I need to make a return on? Or can I buy something that I personally like a little bit more, but that may not create as much of a return? What do I need to do? Do I need to create money with it? Do I, do I not need to? That would give me more options, right? And if I was going to be active, I would go and I would do a lot of the research myself and I would connect with other people such as yourself that are already doing these things, ask some questions and, and get some guidance. Um, that's what I would do if I was going to be active. If I was going to be more passive, I would find somebody like you and I'd say, hey, I want to um, have an investment down there. What do you have right now? What are you doing? Can I take a look at them? And what, um, you know, if I put this with you, am I able to use it? You know, and just find out. The different yeah. options but if i was going to be active i would do it one way if i was going to be passive i'd find somebody such as yourself to help guide me through it so that i can enjoy it but then not need to do all of that research myself yeah it's interesting because again you know i spend most of my time analyzing properties here we just analyzed one in aviana the other day which was six one bedrooms and two two bedrooms to go in remodel it and did it at a short term and a like long term analysis you know the long term return i think it was like 9.5 percent the long term was like just under 19%, you know, short term was just under 19, long term was, you know, it's about 9% going close to 10. And it's just interesting, you know, because different models, and usually that's what it is, you know, a, a, a short term will usually do double what a long term does sometimes more, right. um, you know, but it's everything's just at what you can get a property for, um, yeah. you know, so because people are constantly rich, if you had $500,000, what would you do, you know, that ends up working with us. And I'd be like, look, I got way more ideas, I need like 10 of those $500,000 at least, um, right. you know, cause I'll do them all at the same time, but, but, but no, I mean, I think great advice there for anyone listening, Shiloh, uh, I really appreciate you taking time to kind of come on the podcast. And I think that anybody that wants to get in contact, uh, I'll put all of your contact details in the description, but appreciate you taking the time to chat with us. Thank you so much. And can I say just one thing, uh, sure. as well, real quick. Um, one thing that, so I, I have these properties in Costa Rica and one of the other reasons that I wanted to get them is because. I hold investor retreats based out of uh, Costa Rica. And so um, as a real estate investor in the United States, I have bought a lot of properties. We have probably about 180 properties now. And and I, I coach some people in how to become successful real estate investors. And so I'll bring them down to Costa Rica so that I can teach them how to invest, not necessarily in Costa Rica, but how to you know buy properties in the United States. But we get to go and enjoy these amazing properties in Costa Rica and have an amazing time for a week. They get a ton of, of education in a beautiful, beautiful location. So that's one thing that I'm really excited about. I have my next one coming up in September of this year, but I hold a couple every year. And so that's uh, that's one thing that I wanted to be able to share in case any of your listeners want to you know, I'm, learn how to invest. In, in I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. And I think for anybody that wants more information on that, as I mentioned, I'll put all the contact details in the description. Um, but again, Shiloh, it's been an absolute pleasure, sir. Awesome. Thanks, Richard. Thanks. I appreciate you letting me uh, be here. Not at all. Have a good one. Okay, you too. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that uh, that podcast there with Shiloh. As you can see, it's it's great to speak to someone that's actually investing and in running properties here in Costa Rica. You know, it's about to take on his third property there. And I think if there's any interest from anyone listening, um, you know, all of his contact details are there in the, you know, in the description down below. So, you know, I mean, it's, 
I've got quite a few clients looking to create a network of properties throughout, you know, Costa Rica. Shallow use the word trifecta there. Um, but there really is, you know, I think it's about 70% of people that come to Costa Rica end up going to Aranao and then from there down to the beaches. So it's it's just very interesting. And I think as a lot of you know, I'm developing a, a big project in Aranao at the moment. Um, so that, that that one's going to be that one's that one's going to keep me busy for a while, that's for sure. But Anyone that wants to reach out to us can info at investingcostarica.com. That's info at investingcostarica.com. If you've enjoyed the podcast, guys, uh, please give us reviews, pass the pod, share it. Um, I, I always ask people whenever I talk to them, how did you hear about it? And it's like, well, so-and-so said that I should listen to it. So, uh, you know, we'll continue to do these uh, and keep getting them out, spreading the word um, and just bringing you kind of like, you know, relevant, up-to-date information on Costa Rica. If there's anything you'd like us to cover, please uh, let me know. Um, I'm actually going to do a podcast in the coming weeks, I think, with Eric in my office. He's the uh, director of engineering and construction um, and uh, really just discuss kind of, you know, advice for people wanting to build here in Costa Rica, some of the mistakes that we see people make. Uh, and then I'll also in another podcast as well, probably cover more statistical uh, information. Um, we recently did one with David Hollander uh, a couple of uh, episodes ago uh, where we discussed some stats on that one. But just go more into kind of some of the stats that we did on the 4,000, you know, vacation rental properties that we'd uh, we'd analyzed here and just where we kind of see the opportunities. So um but appreciate you guys listening. Um, I hope you have a great uh, week, weekend, wherever, whenever you're listening to this. And uh, we'll see you on the next podcast. Bye. The number one Costa Rica real estate and investment podcast, bringing you experts from all over Costa Rica. 